welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Patera with you this afternoon. So many of you have been asking, what are you talking about? What's your blight spray? What is your natural blight spray? So on my tomato tips video, I talked about that and I hadn't had to move into that situation yet, but it's time. We have gotten so much rain this year. I don't even know. I think we're making up for last fall into <laughs> early winter time because we were in such a drought. I'm not sure if we're technically out of a drought, but we got to be close, people. We got to be close. So I typically don't make videos or show things until I'm actually using them and I am beyond needing to use it. We've got a couple problems that are creeping up into my gardens and the key to being able to eliminate any problems in your garden area is to attack it the second you see it waiting a day or three, you just compound the problem. So always know the quicker you get in there and get it done, the better off your results are gonna be. So we're starting to see a little bit of blight in my Back to Eden garden. We haven't had this problem in three years. So I have not technically even used this recipe. A friend of mine gave it to me, actually gave it to me four years ago when we moved up here. I had never used it before. I was a little skeptical and I used it. I had 106 tomato plants. 106 and it was a very very wet year as well and I started using this I did exactly what she said I was very aggressive with it and I had wonderful results my neighbor did not go this route and actually kind of questioned what I was doing <laughs> and ended up going more of a chemical route and lost the entire garden so needless to say we have an example of this truly can work if you do it right so know that first and foremost if you are having issues with blight the first thing you need to do is you have got to get in there and you've got to remove the problematic leaves, stems, etc., etc. Get them out of there. You need to properly clean your tools, okay? So even going from plant to plant, you need to do that, okay? Because you don't want to spread it. When I cut the these items out of my tomato plants, see, I'm already pruning. So when I start to see something and I know that it's problematic and I take it out, I put it in a garbage bag and that goes to the dump. It doesn't even stay on my property. I don't throw it in the compost. I don't throw it on the side. I don't leave it in the garden. I get it off of my property. I close it up, double bag it, and it goes. Don't burn it. You want to get it away and far, far, far and away, right? So that is the first thing we have already done, okay? So I technically went and got everything that I needed last night. Well, I got one item that I needed, and I'll show you in just a second. I wanted to do this last night, but we had to deal with a new washer and dryer situation. Thank you, Lord. Uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, Tonight is when I'm going to actually spray. Now, why am I showing, why am I talking about tonight? When you make this mix, you want to spray it, in my personal opinion, in the very late evening. Say if it starts getting dark 9 or 9.30, you might want to spray it around 8 because you don't want to burn the leaves on your plant. So like I said, I did all of this several years ago. It worked beautifully. It saved my garden and I had bushels and bushels and bushels of tomatoes. So what are the things you're going to need? It's very simple. You've seen most of these items in many of my different mixtures of recipes and garden tricks and killing weeds and all of these things before. So let me show you. So last night, because I totally had to get a new washer and dryer. We've been holding off for three, two to three months and it had to happen. So while I was there, I said, this is it. It's, a, it's, it's meant to be. You need to get you a one gallon. I got mine at Lowe's. You can get you a one gallon little pump spray. They're $9.95. I've shown these before and I've talked about it. I got a brand new one because when I use these for certain things, I like to mark them for what they're used for and that's it. So this is gonna be my blight spray, okay? My homemade blight spray. So this is a brand new one. Like I said, you can get it over in the uh, garden section uh, over at Lowe's. Very simple to put together, simple pump spray. Boom, $9.95. Get it, it's worth your money and time to have one. Uh, so definitely. And everything you're putting in here, nothing is dangerous or uh, anything like that. So if you need to rinse it out and wash it out down the road and use it for something else, you're probably going to be okay. But nonetheless, go ahead and grab you a couple of those. So this is my third one. So here it is right here. Boom. So there's that. The next thing you're going to need that you probably already have on hand is a teaspoon. Whatever type of teaspoon you've got, okay? So here are your active ingredients. First and foremost, this is the big enchilada right here, baby. And I buy it big time baking soda you're going to use three now if you do a little bit more a little bit less it's not going to be that big of a deal but shoot for at least three tablespoons of this so what you're going to do is you're going to fill this up with water you're going to then add your three tablespoons of your baking soda i keep wanting to say baking powder we're not making biscuits so you want to put that in there okay so know that right now 
boom, easy to have. Easy. I keep this on hand for multiple reasons, for my teeth, my goats, this, that, and the other. So know that you need to have a big one of those and three tablespoons goes in here. The next thing you're gonna use is pure old vegetable oil. Now you can use different types of oil. I would assume that technically it doesn't have to be this, but I do keep one of these on hand. You can see I've gotten it at Costco. One tablespoon into the gallon mixture with the water and the baking soda, okay? Boom. Last but not least, let it be your choice, needs to be some type of dish soap. You can use, as you know, I'm a Dr. Bronner's girl. I love lavender. I'm also uh, in love with the eucalyptus. I don't care if it's plain. You wanna add a couple of drops. That helps to like emulsify it, okay? Uh, if, all you, if you don't have this and you just got some Dawn, do you a couple drops of that, okay? Do that right there. So you're gonna have your main enchilada ingredient, you're gonna have your item in here that's gonna help make it stick to the leaves, and then you're gonna have your emulsifier. You just blend this up, mix it up, and you're gonna spray. Spray it in the late, late evening. I guess you could probably technically do it early morning if you wanted to, but with dew or anything like that, I wouldn't wanna mess with that. I'd wanna add it when the leaves are very dry, but yet there's no chance of them actually burning. Now, you're gonna to have to be aggressive with this. I'm gonna tell you right now, you do it one time, it's just like, you know, running a mile and then eating a Snickers. You probably didn't do much there, although Snickers at times is, you know, pretty good. <laughs> good stress relief, whatever. So anyway, this is what I'm going to be doing tonight. If you look back over here right now, you can see we're about to get hit with another thunderstorm. So I wanted to go ahead and make this video now um, because I've been having to put it off for two days and I wanted to get all of this information out there to you because I'm getting so, I've been getting, since my tomato tips video and I'll add it here, I have been getting so many requests for this. So this is simply what I do for blight. Like I said, I haven't had to do it in several years because we've had no issues. The weather's been very cooperative and typically the Back to Eden Garden has been excellent. And overall compared to what I've seen, I just got a couple of plants kind of starting. Um, so I'm like I said, trim that stuff out, get it away from the plants and the property, property uh, properly clean your tools and get aggressive on this. You may have to apply this several times a week. So I would, depending on how the large, uh, the severity of your issue, I would go ahead and plan that you're going to be doing it two or three nights in a row or several times a week. If it rains, you're definitely gonna have to stay aggressive with it in between your weather, weather patterns. I hope this video helps you out. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. I haven't done this in a while. We're gonna test it again this year, aren't we? Like I said, it worked great that first year. Saved, I believe, almost all, I think I lost two tomato plants, so I think I ended up with 104. So I'd say the results were pretty good. But again, your involvement and your aggression in this issue is absolutely paramount. Y'all take care out there. Happy gardening season and we'll talk to you soon.